Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Vincent Schwenk and I want to record another tutorial for you on YouTube. I got a lot of questions from people how I did this effect where an object touches something and then we have this sort of explosion thing and uh, it's quite easy so let's directly start with Cinema 4D. I have my final scene already open and let's press play to see what we're gonna do today. So we have got some initial hit and then we've got some growing effect of this cups. And let's recreate this. In general I used a cup which I did um, for a friend of mine. Um, she's called Laura's uh, Tokiton and it's quite easy modeling. Let's duplicate this into a new scene. And for example you can also see my scene is already some of the setups in here so I save a little bit of time. Let's have a look onto this. Let's get rid of these ones. And I'm working with dynamic text. And I'm, we're using the old system. So right click it's in bullet, rigid body. Now the rigid body acknowledge all the objects and inside of the object there is some text in there which is a bit hidden so we have to move it up a bit now the text would react as well so you can see it's directly gone it's somewhere down there and that's still the cinema bug when something is procedural the bullet engine doesn't recognize them so if you have the same error you can just uh, do this like turn it on and off and then it's at this right space again and to avoid that these objects are flying into the void we also need to go to bullet tag and we need to apply ghost tag both um, things are dynamic but this ones are not flying away then as a ne next thing you probably notice that my object is not falling down so you need to press command d to get your to your settings well now you need to go to your bullet settings these are the new simulation things and i have my gravity on zero because i want to adjust my gravity by myself so let's type gravity and by the way i press shift c which is the shortcut for the commander and in the gravity i definitely don't want to have this much of gravity and in the end i think i use something like 60 then let's do Duplicate this cup because this was the one which should hit the objects below and that's the cloner one. So let's create a cloner and put our second cup into the cloner. Let's see what we got. It's definitely way too big. So let's try out something like 2 by 2 by 2 and here also 2 and we need 3 by 3 by 3. Let's see. First of all, let's get rid of our wireframe so it's a bit more clean. And then let's see if we have some offset coordinates. Somehow the hero object is not at 0, 0, 0. And this is like always pretty good to model and to work on. So I'm pressing Alt 0. That's the PSR constraint. So now everything goes back into 0. And let's all zero everything out what we got here. So it's nice, handy and clean. Check everything is 0. Nice. Then let's move the one cup up, which should hit our objects below and the object below we will start with two by two by two let's press play and they're all flying away so we need to counter that and for this we go into the dynamic tech and then into the forces and then follow position and follow rotation and for now i will make the value pretty high so 15 now we got they're all in place that's a pretty good start but in general it'd be nice to get give it a bit more randomness so i'm pressing shift c again to get my commander and i am applying a random effector to my cloner and i don't want to affect the scale i only want to affect the rotation and perhaps position as well so you need to select the random effector and then go to parameters and i have my preset here you can save your own presets by changing some values here and then on the right you can save preset so this saves you some time but in this case i don't want to have a scale yeah i think this is a good start then let's press play nice so we got a bit of a random first thingy here but i think we have too many objects and let's reduce the amount by just two so they're all sticking together and then we want to animate the objects up if the we got the first collision and that's at frame 29 so let's go back to frame 20 put up a keyframe go to 29 and now let's try out something like 2 by 2 by 3 and let's see how the animation looks yeah that's something but a few things to tweak first of all i think we made the strength of the follow position and follow rotation way too strong let's try out something like two by two and let's press play and now you can see the objects are falling down as well a little bit with the gravity so let's try it a little bit more of the follow position so they try to stick a bit more and the rotation dampen the energy out of the rotation a bit more and like this it looks quite interesting i would say we need to repeat the effect at let's say at frame 98 i want to go back to the cloner 
and set another keyframe, go one more frame uh, to the right and increase our clones. Let's see, press play. So first hit and second hit and the other cup is flying out like crazy. I think we should have a look onto the first cup. I think the motion could be a bit more interesting and we can easily do this by going to the dynamics and then custom initial velocity. And I want to have a bit of velocity going on in the first frame. So I'm giving them only a rotation velocity velocity by 5555555. And now you can see that we got a bit of interesting motion at the start, jumping around like crazy. And overall, I think this object is too spinny and bouncy and flyingy. So let's try to reduce the motion in general. And there are two ways we can go for the position and for the rotation, but you can also dampening the overall motion. Let's try to dampen both the rotational and the linear dampening. And let's see. 20 by 50. Yeah, I think this is better. Then to make the scene a bit more interesting, let's duplicate this guy and we can just offset the keyframes a little bit. So I'm just selecting them and dragging them to the side and let's reposition this guy. Also for the first keyframe, this one should be only one object. Then as a next thing, I think it would be a good time to have a look onto a composition and I'm switching my views here. So I have two, I have one perspective and the left one is the one for my uh, camera, which is already in the scene. So we can select the camera and it's a 220 millimeter lens. And I say we'll go for 200 in this case here. And let's try to frame everything in an interesting composition and let's press play. And we are bit too close I would say and to make the things round I think it's always good to kind of have a triangular composition so we have three objects in our scene here and let's try to position it like something like this this one should I don't know react quite late but let's say it has more objects to come and on his last bound so I'm selecting the keyframes for the third one moving it more to the right and now I want to go, I don't know, five by five by five, give it a keyframe. And let's also say this one should be more snapping around, spinning around. So that means we can reduce the follow position and follow rotation. And then let's press play. So we got some interesting hits there and bam, the last one is really going crazy. But I think to make it a little bit more interesting, this we should think this explosion with this explosion. So let's select our keyframes, put them to 135. And the last one should also be at 135 or one frame later. So that this guy starts at the action and this one follows with the reaction. So let's reposition our camera a little bit more, perhaps something like that. And let's press play. This looks pretty much pretty nice. I would say 200 frames is too much for this animation. Let's go 165. Also had the feeling that the last hit could happen a bit earlier. So I'm selecting both of the keyframes and I'm moving them more to the left. And now perhaps we can even reduce our keyframes to 150. And now we need to have a look onto our camera perhaps. So at the first frame, perhaps we want to go a little bit closer to frame our composition a bit nicer, give the camera some keyframes, go to frame 150 to our last frame and not 150. Now I want to move the camera a little bit around, reposition a bit and give it a keyframe here. Let's cache the scene and have a look how everything looks. So I'm clicking onto the dynamic tag on the right side. We can cache the whole thing like bake all and you only need to select one object. If you select more objects and bake all, it will just repeat the bake all process over and over again and it takes way, way longer and while well, you're just producing garbage there. So 100% and let's see. Yeah, this looks nice. But I can already see that the motion of the camera is too fast. It's hard to see because I get so dropped frames per second. Because of my experience, I would say that was a bit too much. So we just select our keyframes from the camera, move them a little bit to the right and also our end keyframes a little bit to the right. So overall, we don't have this much motion going on anymore. And I can, and I can click on the left side down here to hide our frames again. Then you only need to do the rendering and I mean, any renderer works for the thing. And I will quickly guide you through my Redshift workflow. And I don't want to go too detailed here because 
This should be like a super easy and beginner tutorial. Overall, what I can say to my scene, I have already lights set up to here and I have a stage already set up so we can quickly give ourselves a background. And probably some of the materials are missing because this one is glossy and it's not supposed to be glossy. So let's quickly select the material on with this icon so you can see on the left side that we have our material which does look a bit complex to be honest and there are materials missing. So the quickest way to solve this is to search for our S assets manager. Now you can see these ones are the material which are missing and I'm pretty sure they're on my Dropbox, but somehow Sima lost the connection. So you can right click and relink the files and then just select the folder where you have your materials. And now they're all back connected. And let's see if Retro will update and it did, but somehow this material is still glossy. Okay, we lost the connection of the vertex map. So let's drag the vertex map in again, and now it works. And the vertex map was there for, because the outside of the cup was rough and the inside is glossy. So I quickly painted the vertex map and it got lost in the shader field. But as I said, I don't wanna go too detailed on the shading here um, because I don't know where you're gonna render. And yeah, all this rendering stuff, this is a bit more complex and you can have a look onto my Patreon where I'm going in there more detailed. Then let's have a last look onto our render settings. What do we, yeah, well, overall, if I have a look on this frame, there's a lot of darkness going on. And I think we need a bit more of GI kind of bounce light. And I have a floor already in my scene. So let's drop it out of the frame. And the floor should also get a bright material. And now you can see there's a huge difference. Um, we got a lot of light coming down from the bottom. And for my taste, it's too much. So let's move it more down. And now you can see that we got a little bit of light coming from the bottom part, which is really nice. Um, but overall, we still have quite some blacks. Perhaps we can get this look a bit nicer if we increase our global illumination strength from the from the lights so i'm selecting all my lights here and let's crank up the value to something like three then in the render settings i want to go i don't want to go for a still so i already have my presets here and i'm selecting the one which i'm always using for instagram it's 15362-1920. and for now we will go with the red of basic and we'll go for medium and Perhaps even I'll drop the quality a little bit so it will render faster. So I'll go 0.02. I don't want to go for denoising. I want to have motion blur. We don't want to have deformation blur because nothing is deforming. I want to have ray tracing on. And let's also have a quick look in here. Global illumination, perhaps we'll crank that up to six. And that's already everything we are doing in here. I would say we are ready to render. Let's check a few more frames to see I don't know if the brightnesses are okay, if the depth of field is right. And by the way, let's have a quick look onto my camera. It's still the old camera, so we need to convert it. But if you anyway did uh, your scene new, then you have a new camera in there. And now I need to adjust my bokeh here and let's try something like 5.6. So we have a bit of a depth of field in there, but yeah, it's too much. Something like 7 and then... As a last thing, I want to check how long, for example, this frame would render and therefore you need to click onto this button. This button will render the scene with motion blur um, in the final resolution with the final quality. And this is the best way to check how long one render takes. And that's a pretty good benchmark. Then you can calculate, for example, 150 frames times whatever comes out now. And then you know how long it takes. Usually I render overnight and yeah, I try to not render longer than, I don't know, 12, 11 hours. Obviously not for this scene, this is super easy, but for more complex ones, it can definitely take a while. This does actually take a while. I thought it would render quicker, but we are rendering right now on a computer with a single 3090 card. Um, yeah, that's, so the rendering takes one minute and 14 seconds, and this is definitely quite okay. We still got a, quite some noise in here, but I think with the fast motion and motion blur and with some denoising, um, it's gonna be super nice. So thanks for watching the tutorial. I really hope you liked it. And if you want to learn more, you can always uh, support me on Patreon. Till then, have a great time and bye-bye.